Well, good evening. I think it's time to begin. I know the pastor probably will watch this. Will he not? Well, I'm sure they will. I just want to announce to you, Pastor, we're, we're glad you're in vacationing. And there tonight, this Wednesday night, there are less than 500 here. But uh, the crowd that's here is a good crowd. And we're here interested in hearing what God would have to say to us. I assure you that I'm not going to tell you what God has to say to you. I want God to tell me and you what he wants us to know. And he does that through his word and by his Holy Spirit. And so we begin tonight with prayer. Lord, we're grateful for the opportunity to be together in your house, in your church, gathered with your people. We ask tonight, Lord, that you would cleanse our hearts, forgive us of our sins, and Lord, make us usable in your service. And may we please you in all that we say and what we do. Bless the ministry of this church and use each testimony and each work in your name for your glory. And bless the ministry that is ongoing tonight on this campus. Pray that you bless the children and the workers, the youth and their workers. Pray for our pastor tonight, Lord, that you would bless him and give him refreshment. And Lord, may he come back invigorated and healthy and to continue to serve you in this place. We love you and we thank you for your gracious mercy. And so speak to us tonight is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. If you have your Bibles tonight, I'm going to be reading from Luke's Gospel, chapter 8. And we're going to begin reading in verse 4. Luke's Gospel, chapter 8, and verse 4. This is the parable of the sower, and uh, we could read it in different forms, as Matthew and Mark also record this. Supposedly, they are the same event, but they don't necessarily have to be the same event because the message that Jesus preached uh, was applicable wherever he went to whomever he spoke to. But as we... Uh, we hear these words. And when much people, verse 4, were gathered together and were come to him out of every city, he spake by a parable. A sower went out to sow his seed, and as he sowed, some fell by the wayside, and it was trodden down, and the fowls of the air devoured it. Some fell upon a rock, and as soon as it was sprung up, it withered away because it lacked moisture. Some fell among thorns, and the thorns sprang up with it and choked it. And others fell on good ground and sprang up and bare fruit a hundredfold. And when he had said these things, he cried, He that hath ears to hear, let him hear. And his disciples asked him, saying, What might this parable be? And he said unto you, it is given to know the mysteries of the kingdom of God, but to others in parables, that seeing they might not see, and hearing they might not understand. Now the parable is this, the seed is the word of God. Those by the wayside are they that hear, then cometh the devil, and taketh away the word out of their hearts, lest they should believe and be saved. They on the rock are they which when they hear receive the word with joy, and these have no root, which for a while believe, and in time of temptation fall away. And that which fell among thorns are they which when they have heard go forth and are choked with cares and riches and pleasures of this life, and bring no fruit to perfection. But that on the good ground are they which in an honest and good heart, having heard the word, keep it and bring forth fruit with patience. The farmer. 
always wanted to be a farmer. <clears throat> Farmers feed America. I wonder, and I wonder how long the farmers can keep up with our demand <clears throat> in our country as far as food supplies are concerned. But I uh, was the son of a Baptist preacher, and we lived in Kibler. And in junior high school, I got to work on a farm for three summers. Got to drive a tractor. Got to disc the fields. I got to uh, <clears throat> pull corn and uh, pick cotton. Now, I know, <coughs> excuse me, that sounds like I'm bragging, but I'm not. Because later I decided that's not exactly what I thought I needed to be doing. <clears throat> but you know, I have an idea that a lot of you people here tonight <clears throat> have some experience on the farm. I remember uh, as a seventh grader, I told my dad, I said, uh, I want to raise a potato crop. I can borrow my boss's tractor and I can break up this ground here next to the parsonage and uh, plant a potato crop. And so I did. I had a half acre of potatoes that made 900 pounds of number one potatoes. Now, the downside of that story was my sister had to help me pick up uh, and harvest those potatoes, and she ruined her shoes, so I had to buy her a new pair of shoes. But I took the money out of the potato crop, and I bought me two pigs. And I fattened those pigs up and sold them, and I made $70. So you see, farming can be profitable, and it can be joyful because... There is always help beyond yourself. God makes things grow. He gives us this example from the Scripture, and then He explains it to us. Because uh, maybe we don't understand the parable. Maybe it's veiled to us. But he makes it very clear. But the Scripture says that there were many people there that did not understand what he was saying. But he was telling us a story that we need to hear. That the ground needs to be broken up. That's what Hosea says. Break up your fallow ground. Prepare yourself to plant the seed and to reap the harvest. But the ground, in some cases, he describes, was hard ground. It had been trampled down, and it bore no fruit. Then he tells us about uh, the ground where, uh, well, let's see, there's the trim. <laughs> I have a hard time looking at my notes, okay? And y'all will forgive me for that. I, I like to speak extemporane extemporaneously from my heart. But there's the trample ground. What's the next ground? Somebody help me. Rocky ground. Is that right? Okay. So somebody's listening or reading. And then uh, there's the, the ground with the thorns that comes up. And all of those are indications of problems in our lives because Jesus compares the ground to us. And he compares the seed to the Word of God. And the seed that finds lodging in our hearts will bring forth fruit. God wants us to rely upon Him and upon His Word to prepare our hearts to listen to Him. And I hope that every day you spend time in God's Word. Because that's the only way we can grow. That's the only way we can produce. It's the only way we can flourish as Christians. I tell you, God has blessed this church in a phenomenal way. And, and He's done it because of His blessing and, and His honor and His glory. And you people have been faithful in, in honoring Him and glorifying Him for what He's done in this place. And we feel privileged to be in this place to serve Him. 
Because we see something going on here that anymore only happens seldomly. But God is doing a work among us. We are seeing things that we used to see and think was normal. But now what we're seeing, the world says, is abnormal. Where people are coming to know Christ as their Savior, where people are being discipled, where people are learning the Word of God. And I'm just thankful to be a part of this fellowship and of this church. And I want God to take from me all of these things that would hinder me from growing and multiplying for His honor and His glory. The world wants to trample us down. We in our flesh tend to trample things down and not pay attention to what God is saying. We tend to allow the enemy to come in and steal the seed that God wants to plant. The thorns and the thistles come up and interfere with our lives. Satan makes sure that a person that desires to be faithful to him is the one he's going after. Because I want to tell you, if God, if the devil's not bothering you, then there's something wrong with your relationship with Jesus Christ. Because the devil gets after God's children. And the only way to thwart that and to keep the evil one from planting, or from planting the thorns and the thistles and trampling down the ground is to trust in him and to give him honor glory and praise and to listen to his word because his word is the seed the seed that grows in us i uh, think that it's unusual to compare the percentages there were four illustrations given in this passage of scripture only one of them was a blessed one that tells us that that ground bore good fruit, eternal fruit. Does that mean that the percentages are the same today? When I, when I read our church rolls and see how many people we have enrolled and folks that have come and made uh, professions of faith and been baptized and have come for a while, it makes me wonder what happened to them. Do you mean that 75% of the folks that are on our church row are not really saved? That ought to break our hearts because the percentages of this parable bear that out because there are many professors but few possessors god wants us to know him and in order to know him we have to spend time with him and in order to spend time with him we have to give ourselves to him turn aside let him grow us because our ability to produce fruit is not ours. It's the work that God does in us and through us. He guides us by His Spirit. He instructs us by His Word. And God wants us to grow, to flourish, to be productive. And I assure you, I, I know that uh, I'm becoming the uh, oldest member of this church. But let me tell you, I'm not ready to quit and I'm not ready to give up because I'm convinced that as long as God has me here, there's something He wants me to do. So if you're here tonight and you're discouraged, let me tell you, we need, you need to get in God's Word and spend time just talking to Him. 
and I assure you he'll direct your paths. Call out to him. Let him direct you in the direction that you need to go. I uh, have a testimony from uh, one of my uh, commentaries. It's from William Barclay. Uh, he writes this story in one of his commentaries. HLG tells this story. In a church where he attended, there was a lonely old man, old Thomas. He outlived his friends and hardly anyone knew him. When he died, HLG went to his funeral. There was no one else there. It was a wild, wet day, and when he reached the cemetery at the gate, there was a soldier waiting. He was an officer, and on his raincoat there was no badge or no rank. He saluted as to a king. Mr. Glee walked away with the soldier and the wind blew back his raincoat where he could see that he was a brigadier general. He said, you're wondering why I'm here. Years ago, Thomas was my Sunday school teacher. I was a wild lad and a trial for him. He never knew what he did for me, but I owe him everything I am. You see, when you sow the seed as a servant of God, you never know the fruit that it's going to bear. But the promise of the Scripture is if you will sow his seed, the Word of God, it will bear fruit. And God wants us to be seed sowers, and he will use us to be a blessing to others. I... Uh, brought my hymn book tonight, but I am not going to sing. But I am going to read you some words. <laughs> 774, when the roll is called up yonder. Now, my wife never records my singing in the shower. But I want to tell you, I've been singing this for a week in the shower. And I can only rem remember the second verse. But I want you to listen to these words these three verses of this song. When the trumpet of the Lord shall sound and time shall be no more and the morning breaks eternal bright and fair when the saved of earth shall gather over on the other shore and the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. On that bright and cloudless morning when the dead in Christ shall rise and the glory of his resurrection share when his chosen ones shall gather to their home beyond the skies, and the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. Let us labor for the master from the dawn till setting sun. Let us talk of all his wondrous love and care. When all of life is over and our work on earth is done, and the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. That's a precious, precious song, but it's also full of gospel messages and encouragements for us to keep on keeping on. To be sowers of the seed, to be faithful, to let the seed grow and find root in our lives so we can share the fruit that God produces in us with other people around us. Well, I don't know how long I've gone. Well, I guess 20 minutes. Boy, this is one of my longest ones. <laughs> you know, you usually cut people's pay <laughs> when, they, when they produce more. They pay me more to be quiet. <laughs> well, let's pray. Lord, forgive us of our uh, lack of spirituality sometimes and uh, help us to be faithful to you.
may we be encouraged tonight to listen to you, to study, to hide your word in our hearts that we might not sin against you, to be the people you've called us to be. And I pray, Lord, that you would give us a vision of the work that you want us to join you in. And may we be faithful servants until you call us home or until you return. For we ask and pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen.